Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. We'll look to get started. I hope you've had a chance to have a quick look back there at one of our writing projects that we launched. I'm just gonna pop up some feedback now. We've been really thrilled with the response that we've had. This is linked to the feedback from the Great Fire of London. And I suppose what has made us the most happy, uh, we love hearing primarily two things, happy children, but happy, happy teachers. And in the current climate that we're all, we're all dealing with, really busy in school, kind of running, running on fumes with constant updates and changes, the ease of Inspire is just a one-click solution that's had all the plans in one place and all the resources with the interactive scene. We know that that's been a huge help to many of you. And we know that because you've been in touch and asked for more and you've said are there future projects, future scenes and writing opportunities. One of the other things that we've talked about with schools that have been using the projects is the use of smaller group projects and how to respond to any potential bubble closures and indeed what we're doing with perhaps COVID catch-up funding and how we can use the projects. So what we're going to look forward to this afternoon is showing you what we've been really busy creating. And I think you'll agree and, and be very pleased with what, what we've got to offer you all. So let's see who we've got here talking this afternoon. That's me, we've got Tara Jones. Some of you have seen me a few times now um, and great to have you back for another webinar. We're going to be hearing from Linda so she's a co-founder of the literacy company and Linda's been integral in bringing the projects together and developing the real quality in the writing planning that leads to those outcomes we can share with you. And then we have Luke with us here, Dr. Luke Whitehouse, and he is the co-founder of Inspire. So he can talk you through some of the scenes and what we have on offer to show you through the project. Okay, so we'll take a look at the aims now. Okay, so they're all clicking up on the screen. So the DFE guidance, it's been for the full opening schools and it's requests that school prioritise some specific points. And they're points we want to cover and share with you today. So for pupils in key stage one and two, school leaders were expected to prioritise and identify the gaps and then re-establish good progress in the essentials. So we've got phonics and reading, increasing vocabulary, writing and mathematics. But we need to identify opportunities across the curriculum, encourage our children to read widely and develop their knowledge and vocabulary. So we, we, we know we've got all this catching up to do but the huge caveat, and it's there over and over again in any documentation coming out from DfE, absolutely need to have this broad and balanced curriculum. So we need to ensure that the majority of pupils have got that full range of subjects over the year, including sciences, humanities, the arts, physical education and sport, RE and PHSE. We need all that coverage coming through in our curriculum. And of course, we have the challenge of re-engaging our pupils with the curriculum and with what they've been doing. So I think that Linda's going to talk a little bit more about the pedagogy we've put in and how we have thought we can do this through these projects in response to these DfE updates. Thanks, Linda. Thank you, Tara. Thanks very much. Thanks for joining us, those that have come along this evening. Let's just have a look at that key statement in the top bar. Education is not optional. That's a key statement within the documentation released by the DfE, that full opening of schools document released in October 2020. If we just look at some of these key principles within this document to start with, and really, I think you'll really will be agreeing with them all. All pupils need to receive a high quality education that promotes their development and guides and prepares them for their future educational journey and experience. None of us are going to disagree with that, are we? None of us. Tara's already talked about this. But from the DfE guidance, one of the real key principles in the full openings of schools is the second bullet point. 
And you've heard this talked about, not just from Tara just now, but right across the board, everyone's chatting about it being broad. And that key word, ambitious, not just broad, but ambitious as well in there. So when you're considering your curriculum, then your, your curriculum planning moving forward, the advice is that it does just that, broad and ambitious. The next one, in this broad ambitious curriculum, you need to make sure all pupils continue to be taught a wide range of subjects. That makes sense, doesn't it? We understand that part of it. And this fourth one is something we feel really strongly about, hence us coming together as a project uh, that we're they're sharing with you just now. This is the one we'll focus on throughout the whole session. So providing remote education of a really high quality that, as it says there, aligns as closely as possible with in-school provision. Really important there to have that right the way across the board. What are the DfE asking us to do so that we meet these following key expectations? And this is really important for all of you to consider back at school as well. So thinking about the revisions you might want to make to your curriculum, how you make them, how you move it forward. Up to and including key stage three, the DfE asks that schools prioritise the most important missed content and suggests that this can be done, done by focusing on that missed content through other subjects, back to our broad and ambitious that we've just focused on. So an example of that would be giving a, a reading a much greater focus in other subjects to further enhance, further embed those reading skills. And that way, other subjects are contributing to the filling the gaps because you're doing reading everywhere which is a huge passion of the founders and Luke and Josh of Inspire that reading is a huge drive of this and we feel very similarly at the literacy company reading has to be of key priority. What we're looking at here is focusing on the fact that there have been substantial modifications to the curriculum at the start of the year in many schools. That's in order to address significant gaps in pupils knowledge. With this focus on gaps taking priority and in turn the gaps being filled, the DfE expectation is that schools return to a normal curriculum content by no later than summer term 2021. Curriculum planning should be informed by an assessment of pupils' starting points and address the gaps in their knowledge and skills. In particular, making effective use of regular formative assessment. For example, small quizzes, observing pupils in class, talking to them about their understanding and assessing that, scrutiny of pupils work. All of that you'll see is possible through this project we're going to share with you this afternoon. This would avoid that unnecessary tracking systems that we have had in place. This bullet point we have here really addresses expectation back to what we've said about this project, that remote learning be integrated into curriculum planning. This is due to the reasons we've just become aware of over these last few weeks. The need for remote education to be an essential component in the delivery of the school curriculum for some pupils alongside classroom teaching, or there might be in the case of local or national restrictions, ever so important. This last statement we've popped on is one that we have really thought about as part of the blended projects. How can children continue to master, that's the key phrase here, how can they continue to master their curriculum during these tricky times? How can teachers continue to plan for this effectively? We've got some solutions for you. So that's our aim this afternoon, is to share those solutions with you. So I'll hand you back over to Tara. There you go, Tara, a nice wee image for you to look at. Well, that's, I'm sure we've got many people who follow Stephen Taney and it's a fantastic book if you have the opportunity, I don't know where we'd find the time, but he opens his, this text, Educating with Purpose. And I think it echoes lots of what Linda's just said there. And it, it, it isn't actually Stephen's quote, but he says, the point of education is that students learn something, they learn it for a reason, and they learn it from someone. And I think what we saw in lockdown, I know certainly in my school, we didn't necessarily have all that time ahead of us to prepare. But this guidance that's come out now, this isn't the same short, sharp, shock response to a school closure. We keep on hearing about this shift back to curriculum. It's been so important to welcome our children back to school. And it's times like this that I'm always so proud to be a teacher and work with teachers. 
we've done it with warmth, we've carefully planned a recovery curriculum, the children have had time to adjust, and what we're seeing now is another shift. I um, went to work on Tuesday and we were four members of staff down. We are seeing the bubbles close. We need to cons consider our blended curriculum and the online curriculum. And what we must consider is that it is matched to a broad and balanced curriculum. So it's those expectations, isn't it? Back to what that quote is saying there. It's the purpose. It's a carefully planned and sequenced curriculum and the purpose as to why we set these tasks for the children. Where does the project fit in and match up to your curriculum and your aspirations and expectations for the children? Which, and Linda and I have talked about this, we, we have to say, aren't our children brilliant? They've been through so much. They're back in school and they're keen and they're ready to learn. So let's give them something really exciting to be doing. And I'm going to show Luke, he's going to show you, indeed I won't, I'll let Luke do it, show you how engaging our resources are for those children who have been through a really difficult time and now they're back in school, back access, accessing the curriculum and we're going to do it through a really engaging stimulus. So we might be going to space, I think, Luke, is that the plan? It is. Have we got our, we got our rockets ready? <laughs> let's, let's get in the rocket. <laughs> Go in the rocket. Well, hello, everyone. It's good to see you uh, join this great webinar. And um, we're really excited, actually, to be showing you some of this stuff. And before we take our rockets and travel through space, one of the, the things that, that we've got to do as educators, isn't it? It's engage those children. I mean, we are at war now with social media, online gaming and consoles. YouTube is a massive uh, contender as well. So we're at war with all these distractions as teachers. So we've got to try and engage them in, in new and innovative ways. So actually they want to learn. I think that's the key thing, isn't it? We want those children to learn. And one of the great ways to do that is embed two things, your topic and your theme, which is your context. And embed that into their writing so they apply those skills and that understanding in their writing so one of the first if we just go to the next slide one of the um one of the frustrating topics i guess is space um and the reason i say that is because if we look at our national curriculum there's only about four skills in year five that are to do with space they've got to learn about orbits they've got to learn about the planets and they've got to learn about day and night and I think as far as I'm aware those are the only real skills the galaxy the Milky Way the universe it's not part of the curriculum the vastness of space is missing so what we can do actually is use this context of space embed those necessary skills in that particular theme and apply them in some really exciting writing because I think space is a bittersweet this is one of the one of the three projects we're going to be launching um, and one of them is space. And I do think space is a bittersweet because it's so exciting. It's the unknown, isn't it? I mean, think about how many movies we've seen, how many books we've read that's to do with space. It is the unknown and it's going to ignite the children's imagination. I would say that most year five teachers really enjoy teaching it and wish there was more to teach in their, in their theme and their topic. But if we think about it, when we think about this vast concept of space, there are many things we can bring in alongside those four skills and I'm sure we've done this I mean we think about some of the images on the screen we can bring in some art and design and technology we can bring in some music we can bring in other elements of the science curriculum as well and so that's why we thought space would be an, a really great thing to have as a blended project because it fits the bill perfectly so I do hope you've got your space suits ready um, and your oxygen masks. We're going to take a trip to an unknown planet, a planet in which hopefully many children are going to visit. It's called Orangel. And you'll figure out the reason why we've called that in a second. So if I share the screen with you, this is the scene that will run alongside the fabulous Pathways and Literacy Company plans. It's the scene that's going to ignite their imagination. So running alongside this stimulus 
are some literacy lessons alongside some science lessons as well. That's why this is the blended project. So this is an unknown world called Orange Gel. There's an audio book that goes with it, along with many, many uh, res online resourcing as well. Now, when we think about science and we think about space, when we start embedding that theme into literacy, that curriculum suddenly becomes alive. We can think about sound waves, for example, and we could make little radios using elastic bands or string or wire. And we can think of ourselves as astronauts in space. We can think about light and electricity because a spaceship needs to be able to have light to see where it's going. And as we run our way through this, lots of different scientific ideas, design and technology ideas, art ideas come to the forefront because we've brought a context for the children. And all of a sudden that those four or five skills that we do in space becomes now 15, 20, 30 skills or 20 odd lessons running alongside our literacy. So here we are, this is, uh, this is orange gel and you'll see there's some weird looking creatures that run across it. So this would be your literacy focus. Uh, and we'll just, just do a, a little quick run through of this. There's some information on the planet. And again, everything is cross-referenced in those literacy plans. So depending on what lesson you're gonna be looking at will be dependent on what part of the scene you're gonna be focusing on. But we've got all these weird, um, well, very strange aliens, which the kids are gonna love because they're very funny. Some of them are hilarious, the little characteristics and behavioral traits they have. Or just click on one here, there's fact files on them. You can print them off as well. Um, this one's called Float Scene. And it's in the name because he floats and he's very good at seeing. So even in the names, there's a little bit of etymology there within the uh, embedding of those names. And I can print these off and I can put them on the tables. It'd be great for some guided readings, some shared reading, maybe before the lesson engages. Um, we've created the own, I won't click on them because of time, but we've created the own geography of the, the planet, the history of the planet. You can go visit these different areas so you can go and see some of the drone footage. There's music to it. There's an ambiance to it. So if I click on the ambiance. So lots of things to engage the children. So that would be our literacy focus. Our science focus, our space focus is this little toggle switch here, which takes us to our science area. So this is all the skills they need to know, all about orbiting, it's all about planet alignation, and it's about the moon as well. And there's lots of videos on here. So I'll just click on one of the videos here. Our solar system. A solar system is made up of one and again that runs alongside some of the topic lessons we have um, with the blended project. There's other things they can be doing here. They can read all about um, space here. They can read about um, a significant person, which is of course Neil Armstrong. So there's loads of things that can that can be packed into the blended project. And I'm talking here not for literacy, I'm talking on behalf of your theme, your, your topic area. So that's Orange Gel. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Time to go back to planet Earth and I'm going to pass you on to Linda, I think. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, so that is certainly one way to whet someone's appetite, isn't it? To actually get us into those themes just there. Thanks for that, Luke. I, my, my appetite certainly whet. I definitely want to see that that floats the again. It's absolutely fantastic to see all of these aliens on screen. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. Okay, we really want to make sure that you can see the real benefits of that technology. Tara, is there something you'd like to add into this section? Yeah, I, I think that, um, and Luke, you've done a superb job there, absolutely of showing us some of the areas. And it's, I suppose I always put my teacher head on and know that that's who's here joining us on the webinar. And this document is just to show you the depth to our planning and our thought process that goes into the development of each scene. So here we have the key strands and curriculum coverage for history. And the reason I am showing you this is very shortly we're now going to leave space and head to it on a dragon safari and, and link very carefully with some work on the Vikings and we're showcasing you one of our projects but it's not without making it very clear 
that we haven't plucked oh this is interesting as Luke said space is interesting it's the careful consideration to the curriculum coverage back to that DFE expectations document we're ensuring that we're matching up to the broad and balanced curriculum expectations so this document I thought did that very well but I'm sure everyone now is desperate to see the combination of the literacy company and our technology so let's let's see it all coming together shall we Linda yeah that would be absolutely super thanks Tara this has been so exciting. When we started working on this with our team, there was a real feeling of excitement in the room. And this is it just coming together now for you. So let's let's just start off with our thinking. So I've got the joy of the afternoon. I get to share this fun project. So thanks very much, Tara, and to Luke for letting me share this part with you. If we go in here, we end up with our lesson plans. And our lesson plans have really been carefully thought through, linked only to this site. So let's just start in this top bit up here. We always think about, we really focus on making sure we master skills. We've talked about that mastery and how we need to make sure that's fully in place, linked to our recovery curriculums. So here we always choose, can you see on the right, when it's banded and right, key mastery skills that will aim for your pupils to focus in on throughout this unit of work. We really think about that repetition of these skills across our loads of different writing opportunities. And they have to repeat that skill until it's fully embedded. That's the aim of it. So also when planning for English, can you see on the left hand side, you've got a non-negotiables. So when we're considering planning for English, we always think about these non-negotiable skills too. The ones we want children to always consider. You can see that top one, you're all probably thinking, yep, yeah, we always focus in on punctuation, but that's to make sure they really think about their proofreading, their editing, when they're going back and looking at these number of writing skills. As you can see in this example, we're also focusing in on the need for accurate range of sentences as well, with a view to children using these across that range of writing, really engaging the reader, thinking about, looks already made you start thinking about these different characters, these different aliens on Orange Ale, but really thinking about that purpose, make the children feel this unit of work. That's really what we're trying to do here, make them really want to get into that unit as much as possible. So we want that range of skills and non-negotiables applied right the way throughout. We always give a final outcome. And in this one, we think you're going to like this one. And in this one, the final outcome is to for the children to totally get enrolled as a myth hunter. And they're going to write their own journal entry as that myth hunter. It'll be guided through that use of the front adverbials, the paragraphs, the commas after front adverbials, that's what we want to see in it. And that will be guided all the way through the project for the children to really consider and really focus in on. Let's think about how we would hook people in or hook our children into this learning. So we're going to now just ask you just to have a little listen for a moment, please. And when you're going to listen, you're going to be thinking about what you can hear on our screen that we're going to just show you here. So just, if you would like to just shut your eyes, that would be absolutely super. Don't feel you need to, but if you would like to shut your eyes, that'd be great. And what you're going to do is you're going to listen in and consider what type of environment this is. Consider, is it real or is it imagined? I really shouldn't have put the picture up, should I? Is it set in modern times or is it set in the past? <laughs> Now you can see and hear there, there has been so much thought put into these scenes. And just looking at it right now, you, you're just completely drawn into this. What we would ask the children to do from the get-go is use this as their hook. Use this to really get them into their learning at this particular point. And we would want them to look, listen in, think about what they can see, sorry, think about what they can hear and really focus closely in that. That would be without the images, first of all. We would then very kindly, as we've done with yourselves, share those images for them after they've had a good listen. And would add to what we thought about this environment. Where is it? What's it like? Who might actually be there? So, and what time is it set in? Because they can hear all those sounds. 
Now, by looking at this, the children are now considering the time in which the sounds came from. So we'll be thinking about the same questions and get them to really focus in on that. And then we'd want them to apply some of those non-negotiables we've just talked about. We'd want them to come up with, this would be playing in the background, this would be playing in the background on a low level. So they could actually be hearing this the whole time. And what we then ask them to do is to really consider that application of those adjectives, those noun phrases, and really thinking about the prepositions and adverbs. So what can you see? Towering snow-covered mountains they've just seen. What did you hear? Flying dragons shrieking wildly. That's what would really get our children to try to focus in. And your eyes are just drawn to it, aren't they? There's so much to consider in this scene. It's absolutely fantastic. Once we've done that, we would ask the children to listen. And they would be listening in after they've done those activities to something about these mythological creatures. Dragons and the Vikings. The Vikings came from the countries we know today as Iceland, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. In this part of the world, dragons were one of the things that people told stories about, along with trolls, elves, and giants. Dragons were sometimes called Ormers or Drakis and appear to have been particularly special because people carved images of them into stone pillars and onto the front of ships. You can hear there, there's so much to engage the children. So now we're linking to that history. Now we're linking, linking to that time, the Vikings, I like the accent as well in there, look, that's a kind of a mix there, I'm thinking she was kind of tri slightly Scottish in there too, I'm not quite sure. Um, but you've got that real mix in there of understanding of your literacy, understanding of a myth within English, but now with all that historical knowledge. So it's completely engaging your children as much as possible. So through this, we would be asking them to become those myth hunters the kind of explorers that delve deeply into creatures from myths and legends. And on this particular trip, they'll be exploring, as you can see there, dragon lands as myth hunters. The writing task that we would really focus on within that, this is all in their first session, we'd be getting them to write a diary and to really think about that diary entry at this point, um, but really using that recount skill, but doing it informally because we want our final myth to be informed, our final journals to be informal. So therefore, they would do it as a postcard format in the recount. Writing back to their family, explain that they've arrived there, explain everything that they've seen and everything they've come across so far, and really ask questions as well. How are you and the kids get that informal style? Do you remember to clean out the goldfish? So that they really focus on that informality as well as all of that details of everything they've found. What we then want to show you here Luke touched on this. We have the fantastic books within here in Inspire. And we couldn't resist looking at these when we were doing this planning section in here. And these books, the beginning, you'll have heard right up here, this beginning bit here when we got up to the dragon ships. But just look on here on the right hand side of this page. There's so much to discuss with our children. To the Vikings, dragons were part of a big group of creatures that they didn't much like such as snakes, scorpions, worms, and caterpillars. They believed that these animals caused diseases and blamed them for all sorts of bad stuff that happened. Vikings didn't like that. Some creatures had special abilities that seemed magical. For example, caterpillars transform into butterflies and snakes shed their skins and grow new ones. Dragons actually thought to be similar to snakes. The Vikings thought that the nasty, greedy people could be turned into them. And one myth, a guy called Yuramungand ate so much food that he grew into dragon. That was so long, it could wrap around the whole world. How much of those children just learned from reading that text? If we were down here on the left-hand side, you can do a principal copy, as Luke just said, of that text as well. With that, we'd want to ask questions to the children and we'd draw them to close reading. As I said earlier, Luke and Josh have been incredibly passionate about the importance of reading as part of Inspire. So we draw the children in. Paragraph one, what the Vikings tell stories about. Paragraph two, why didn't the Vikings like dragons, worms, snakes, etc. Paragraph three, what happened to Yoramungand? 
this three dragons and stories and where was Beowulf written there on the next pages that we were focusing on over here. So really focusing in on that fantastic text and getting the children to engage with that as much as they possibly can. There's so much within this. It's almost endless, the opportunities within these scenes that hopefully that you're beginning to see in there yourselves, huge amount of opportunities to really focus in on. And we have just engaged and loved using these scenes um, to plan from, absolutely having a lovely time doing so. Just something to consider here as well. We talked about making sure that we have a real focus on the skills that we're teaching. Just to show you how this would work, we said we were going to be doing a focus in on looking at paragraphs and adverbials, and this is what we would do from that. So we'd take the ideas from the text, so these are this is all within the unit, and we'd take these ideas from the text and we'd ask the children to put those into two piles. So they'd be thinking about are they Vikings or are they dragon sentences and they'd really have to read these closely. So we'd be doing that to really considering to consider that view to how to paragraph their writing which is the key skill. Then we would ask them to choose one of the sides, Vikings or dragons. Once they've chosen one of the sides we would ask them then as a writing task to write a description of everything they've learned so much so far about Vikings and dragons and would ask them to use those fronted adverbials to join that together in that section of writing. So it's all really been thought through with a good clear focus and on everything linked to the Inspire site with the final outcome being them writing as that myth hunter and applying each of those skills as they do so. Something else we would just like to show you within the page in here is really thinking here about that cross-curricular side that we just talked about. So as you, you noticed on the plan, or maybe you didn't notice in the plan, on the right hand side, you can see it says inspire humanities. So we want to link that literacy and the humanities together. So when you open up the inspire humanities here, what you'll notice are some fantastic geography ideas. We have our science and we have our art as well. And you'll have noticed there when you looked at the scene or perhaps you didn't quite notice, maybe didn't give you enough time to do so, that you have different elements as well on the scene to look at, which is what we're going to draw into through the humanities. So on those scene, I'm not sure if you did see this one, but there's one that actually talks about droppings. I can't imagine, look how much fun you actually had creating this one that has droppings on it. But the children are, would just love focusing in on here, that would link obviously to your science skills. But in the habitats, really focusing in on your geography and understanding each of these habitats. Caves. The caves where dragons live can be small, cramped, dark and damp. And you get the idea there, absolutely super. You really want me to open up this one, don't you? See what's in it. Lizard here. logs. This is the type. There you go. That's all you're getting for just now. Just a little bit in there linked to what we actually have. But that links in the humanities back to the literacy skills is what we have aimed to do so in there. So hopefully you've got a good idea of the project so far. Let me just pop the cameras on here. Guys, you want to pop the cameras on as well? So just sorry, let me pop that light out. Oh, it's gone properly dark in my house, hasn't it? Oh, maybe you your habitat there, a dragon. Yeah, which habitat was I? And that was all that chat about droppings, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I was I know, not there. You know, so I feel like that that. now we're going to have people saying that they wanted to see a bit more of the lizard logs and the dragon droppings. Oh, I think so. I think that's exactly what people are going to ask for. This is going to be available from the 23rd of November. And from the 23rd of November, you'll be able to have access to that fantastic dragon site that you just saw there for year four with that planning link to the year four. You'll also have the year three, which is just an absolutely gorgeous scene. And it all links to your Enchanted Forest plus Merlin and potion making. How, who, which year three child's not going to love that? Then orange gel. That, that Luke has already shared that orange gel with you, which is just magnificent in there. That has been one that we have loved looking through. Just the way it's all put together, Luke and Josh is just so clever. You just piece it all from all the knowledge. I felt like I was going back in time to 
quite a long time ago with Space Invader Machines when I was watching that one. Absolutely super scenes in there. So you can see there the annual online subscription package of 395 with year two and year six coming in soon as well. Um, Tara do, or Luke, do you have anything you want to add in there? Uh, just with regard to the year two and the year six, they'll be built into the subscription and each will have a similar interactive, so it'll be a different scene. And that's where a huge part of the cost comes from, the building of all that content. But we are going to look at them transition scenes and thinking about those key years in year two and year six. So these will be added into the subscription. And also that it is a lot to take in. Um, some of our attendees joined us after us. I showed that first feedback and people were honest and said, there is so much in every scene. It takes a while to get used to. And absolutely the depth to the scenes, we talk about them spanning a half term. It could be a full term. There's a real depth to what's available from the interactive scenes. And we're always happy to share that with you and explain in further your writing outcomes and as well as your humanities and cross-curricular links. But I, I'm sure everyone's picked up, Linda, on how kind of proud we are of bringing these two companies together. Yeah. In response to COVID, in response to the school shutdowns, we've made something quite special here. So we're looking forward to seeing it in schools now and, and get in touch with us. <laughs> Yeah, we are super proud of it. Really super proud. Can we give a sneak peek of them? Um, yes. yes. I know which one you're going to give a sneak peek of. Go for it. Jen, you've just asked a question. I'll get back to you, Jenny. Um, hi, Jen. Thanks for joining us. I will get back to you on that. But I do know that in particular, we talked at your school about ancient Greeks. We have got something really exciting to show that links to uh, writing of Greek myths and Greek mythology. So I think we've probably got about two minutes, Luke, to do a sneaky peek of the Greek scene. Oh, totally doable. We, now though, no rockets, we've got to get in our time machines now. Okay. <laughs> they probably didn't exist, did they? Right. Fact, so speaking, of, speaking of journeys, I think we actually have one of our panelists that's joined us today from Q8. So very, very happy to have you here and welcome. We, we hope you like what you've seen. So space, traveling across the globe to be here for our blended project and now back in time to ancient Greece. I don't know if you uh, agree with this, but Greece is another is another uh, slightly bittersweet um, subject because there's lots of history, lots of geography, but we really want to get those myths in, don't we? And so writing is the perfect opportunity for that. So I'll just give you just a sneak peek. Can you guess um, which two myths these are? That's the that's the, the burning question. So who would this be? Oh, Linda it... Tara, you know. <laughs> I'm seeing if everyone's going to be bra uh, brave in the chat and say who it is, or <laughs> any of our panellists. Go for it. I did, I did want it to be Thor, didn't I, Look. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whatever you do now, Linda, don't turn the light off now. You'll be very frightened. So okay, I won't. Uh, I'll leave it on. Thank you for the tip. Pleasure. This is, this is obviously the Minotaur. Uh, brilliant for writing one of the great, great ancient Greek myths. Lots of things on this one. We've got cartoons on this one, so you can watch some cartoons. I'll just quickly, just quickly show you one um, little cartoon. Part two. The first test came after only walking a few miles. Theseus found his path blocked by a brute carrying a shiny club. So it's Theseus's journey towards the Minotaur. He has to fight a lot of monsters on the way. And then at the final bit of the, of, of the, the cartoon, he meets the Minotaur in which the scene engages. So you've got a backstory. And I, I don't know about you, Linda, we're, we're, we're in literacy, when you come to those higher level skills, writing a backstory is really difficult, isn't it? Because you've got to use references and, you know, especially if you're doing first count perspective. There's also um, Thesis' own monologue, how he felt on the way uh, after fighting the Minotaur. The Minotaur, the name of that horror of a beast still strikes fear into my heart, even though it's gone. I killed the Minotaur and I do it again a thousand times over to free myself, my father and- Listen to that emotive language. I think like one that. thing, Luke, that you and I have talked about quite often and, and in response to school lockdown is this is the type of interface, the gaming experience that our children are used yeah. to. This is yeah. their world at home, characters, yeah. avatars, 
clickables yeah. and sometimes in the classrooms in the past we've seen quite dry teaching of ancient Greece and it might be a document printed out the child's experience of it of an interactive scene this is this fits in with what they do at home on their iPads on their computers and so they're really engaged in Greek mythology through yeah. play ultimately and what, what, what they'll be able to do on this as well, this is obviously Hercules and Hydra. They'll be able, able to ask the characters questions and the, the characters will respond to those questions. There's only a certain amount of questions. It's not like Siri, uh, but they'll be asked some <laughs> questions and Hercules and Theseus will respond to them. So it's going to be really cool. It's going to take the ancient Greek myths to, uh, to the next level alongside obviously some wonderful planning, wonderful planning, because we can't do it without those great plans. Okay. Well, Thank you so much, Luke. As I say, we're thrilled with the project. We've, we've enjoyed working together as the two companies. And what we look forward to now is seeing it in schools. So, so get, do get in touch with us. The contact details are up there. And Linda, thank you so much for taking us through that brilliant dragon planning that the Literacy Company have put together. It's thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for joining us, everyone. If you